gear, it shows the RPM uh, navigation. It has a uh, music player that you can switch between different uh, music. Uh, Very nice. This is making me want to get a new car. <laughs> <laughs> Today, um, we're going to be entering the world of user interface design. And one of the problems for embedded developers is that typically um, user interfaces have been more in the domain of like, let's say like an applications processor, but now with all these IOT type of devices and the requirements for lower power, um, lower cost, et cetera, microcontrollers like 32-bit MCUs are being deployed into a lot of those application spaces where you still want to have um, a really cool slick UI. We brought on Ari uh, Janam, who is the Director of Business Development at Qt for Qt for MCUs. How are you doing today, Ari? Hey, Brandon. Thanks for inviting me in. Let's take a look at, at Qt for MCUs, because this is a pretty revolutionary, at least in the embedded space. Um, I know you have some uh, uh, examples and some applications uh, that you're going to show us. Let's dive right in. OK, yeah. Let's click on the automotive demo. And this is a CMake-based uh, project, so it's important to have CMake installed on your machine. And once you have the uh, CMake installed on your machine, you click on CMake lists, and you open the project file. Uh, nothing new over here. It shows a number of things that you have to configure for this project. So we are going to select uh, a desktop build, and we are going to select two more uh, builds that are configured for two different uh, microcontroller boards. Great. So um, while we're configuring right now, um, I saw you had an XP part there, you had an ST part. Um, are there any other parts, and, and how many are you supporting right now? A good question. Um, yes. So we are we supporting uh, right now uh, microcontrollers from three different vendors. Uh, we are supporting ones from NXP, specifically the i.mx RT series. Uh, we, we are supporting STM32 microbit controllers, specifically the F7 series and the H7 series. And then we have support for Renesas RH850, which is an automotive grade microcontroller. What we will do is right now we will build this for desktop. So it's possible to run this application even if you do not have a microcontroller. Very so let on the run button. So what it's now doing is, uh, is it's configuring the uh, project and then uh, it's going to build the project and uh, we will see uh, yeah, the compile output over here. As you can see, it's start, starting to uh, run different tools. It's going, to, uh, it's going through all the YAML files and then it's building the project for the desktop build. So one important thing to note here, um, just really hammer this home, is that obviously with Qt for MCUs, what we're looking to do is we're looking to end up with a, um, an executable package that is significantly smaller, right, in terms of footprint uh, than other versions of Qt. That's correct. Very good. And so, here we go with the automotive demo now running on our desktop build. And this is how, uh, this is of course uh, an instrument cluster, as you can see. It's got different elements. It shows the speed, it shows the gear, it shows the RPM uh, navigation. It has a uh, music player that you can switch between different uh, music. Uh, very nice. This is making there. me want to get a new car. <laughs> <laughs> and um, of course, it is non touch because uh, you're not supposed to be touching your <laughs> instrument cluster while driving. Right. What we can do is what we did. Uh, as we built it for desktop and very easily what we can do is we can select one of our microcontrollers and say um, that we want to create a release build out of it and after we select that we just yeah let uh, greater configure it and once it is configured we can then hit the run button uh, sorry the build button that will start building this application for the ST board. Uh, I will use another tool which is called the STM32 ST Link Utility Tool. And I will use this tool to flash onto the device. In the future, this sort of functionality will also be um, included in Utilizer. Very you good. Just hit, hit the run button and then it gets deployed directly onto the device. And that's done. So here I have the 
binary file that I can flash onto the device. I select that and I start flashing. And uh, I'm going to change so it's, yeah. my camera soon after it flashes to show you how it looks like on the device. Binary is now deployed on the STM board. This is an STM32 F769i discovery board. And this is the same demo that I was showing you on the desktop machine now built for the ST board and deployed on the ST board. And as I mentioned, this is a instrument cluster, so of course it's not. Um, it's Much compatible, but still. Great. So uh, one of the things about, um, uh, about the, these boards is that it's very important to understand what the screen resolution. Right. Because the resolution has a big impact on the memory size. So for the automotive instrument cluster demo that I was showing you, it, it was uh, it's built with an 800 into 480 resolution with 32-bit color bit, mm -hmm. and we are using double buffering. So that roughly gives you around three megabytes of uh, frame buffer required to show the the, the yeah, graphics on the screen. But if you are looking at the application itself, then we are looking at around 446 kilobytes of internal RAM usage. And that's about it. And apart from that, you have uh, the asset data, which basically are all the different images that we are using. And that's roughly around two megabytes. Um, so all in all, uh, two megabytes plus the, the, the RAM and text, so you roughly around 2.4, 2.5 megabytes for the whole app. But Ari, I know that most people are going to be mostly interested in um, seeing where they can go find out more and evaluate uh, Cube for MCUs for themselves. Sure. So what one needs to do is uh, go to the landing page. So that's on uh, Q.io slash minus four minus MCU. And when you come to this landing page, uh, there is a button called request evaluation. When you click that button, then you just need to send a couple of things, basically your name, company name, uh, business email, because that's where you will get your evaluation uh, email uh, to this email address. And once you get your email address, what you would have to do is uh, you would get into your Qt, you would get uh, details to log into your Qt account. You sign into your Qt account. So you get into your Qt account and you go to the download section. You go to the product and in product you see there's something called Qt for device creation, MCU evaluation. You click on that and you have a download ready. If you click on it, you get your evaluation. You're ready to go. That's awesome. Well, uh, all right, all right. Well, thank you so much for uh, taking the time today to walk us through Cube for MCUs. It looks like there's going to be a whole uh, big new world of user interfaces out there, user interfaces on everything um, with, with, this, uh, with this release. Sure. Thanks, Brandon, for inviting me in. It was lovely mm -hmm. to talk. You too. Take care.